And the Rebels hope to salvage one in this three game set against the Dogs. As Friday night, we were washed out, so we played a doubleheader yesterday. Georgia won both, and Ole Miss, who's four and six at home, trying to get a wind under their belt this afternoon. Cleather Miss deals today's first pitch. She misses to Davis, and we're off and running for game three in Oxford. Those numbers are something. Over 300 hitting for Davis this year. Her OPS near 1,200. And she gets under this out to right. Looked good off the bat, but not enough. Right at McKay, who makes the catch. And that's a big out, big start to the game for McKenna Clee Thermos. She needs to get ahead of these Georgia hitters, which yesterday we talked about it. She had way too many walks in that second game. Georgia in general yesterday, Missy worked a ton of walks. 16 walks for the Bulldogs in both games. Yeah, and if you're old Miss, the, you, you just it's hard to come back from that. Oh, uh, giving free passes, and Georgia took uh, 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 advantage of several of them, but again, we talked about it in the opening. They left 22 runners on base in scoring position yesterday. Mosley checked at it. It's up in the center field, and De Leon makes the catch. So an oops swing from Mosley, and there's out number two. Those are two quick outs for McKenna Clee Thermos. She gets Mosley to check her swing on that rise ball. It's two big outs. Two very talented hitters in Georgia's lineup, and now you face Jada Kearney, the right fielder, hitting 351 coming into this afternoon. Kearney's two for five in the series against Ole Miss. And takes inside for ball one. Jada Kearney in that second game against McKenna Clee Thermos was able to earn several walks. It was very patient at the plate. Yeah, she was one for one in game two. That's how many walks she had. Right. <laughs> Let's it be upstairs, two and oh. Yeah, she had four walks in that game. But that's what Tony Baldwin wants, right? He knows he has vicious hitters, but the plate discipline also needs to be there. And that's what you want. You want to put pressure on the opposing pitcher, especially when you make deep, deep postseason runs. Absolutely. And, and then I had the opportunity to visit with him this morning, and I asked him about all those runners left on base. And he said, well, you know, you're dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds, and so um, you're going to have that. But he talked about the patience and the hits and – and, and that and, um, you know, just more importantly was the patience at the plate and getting a solid pitch to hit. Cleaver missed with a two and two count on Jada Kearney with two down in the top half of the first inning. Chases it upstairs and fouls it off to the right. The reigning SCC co-pitcher of the week, McKenna Cleethermis. Struggled yesterday against the Bulldogs, looking to make up for it today. 2-2. Two -two. Kearney sits fifth all time in Georgia history with 53 career home runs. She's two away from tying Tina Yosefa. With 55 from 2013 to 2016. Fouls that one off too. That's, I mean, these Bulldog hitters, they're just so good at battling at the plate. We saw so many of these counts yesterday didn't we? And, and they, just, they just wanted Ole Miss pitchers to make a mistake. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what you have to do as a good hitter. You foul it off until you get something that you can drive or the pitcher makes a mistake. Rolls this up the middle for a two-out base hit. And hit number 34 this year for Kearney. And that's what exactly what we were just talking about is you have a 3-2 count and Kearney fouls off a pitch until she gets something or – the pitcher makes a mistake, and Clee Thermos threw that ball a little bit too much over the middle of the plate, and she's able to drive it back up the middle for a single. 
Sidney Kuma at the plate, 4-10 hitter coming into this afternoon. And fouls it off into the construction zone that is currently Ole Miss's softball complex. Love the, uh, you can't really call that eye black, can you, Missy? That's uh, glitter? <laughs> no, but uh, looks good. <laughs> Eye pink. Eye pink. A little eye glam. Can we call yeah, it eye glam? Yeah, sure. sure. Eye glam. That sounds good. All right. The eye glam is on point today for Kuma. Uh, well, Kuma came into the series with a 405 batting average leading the team, and she was able to bring it up five points in yesterday's doubleheader. Yeah, it makes sense when she went four for five in the doubleheader yesterday. Three RBIs. Let's it be one and two. Well, Clean Thermos does a good job of getting ahead of Kuma in this at bat. You know, she's really got to stay focused here and try and get her to swing at, at her pitch. Strike three call. Clean Thermos locks. And quick step off from Walters. An Energizer Bunny, Jayla Lassiter. Also four multi-hit games in her last eight games and now a call of time behind the plate. Davis, the catcher, goes to her dugout. I think they're having issues with their electronic device, which is new as of this year for softball. They can receive the signals from the dugout. It's for defense only. And Lassiter takes ball one. Jayla Lassiter, 39 hits this season, very close to the 48 she had her freshman year. That got her NFCA All-South Region honors. No sophomore slump from Jayla Lassiter, that's for sure. Yeah, not at all. Takes the strike. Hitting 386 this season. She hit three, I beg your pardon, 286 last year. Sophomore slumps are real too, Missy, but <laughs> Lassiter making sure that didn't happen this yeah, year. They absolutely are. But she has done such a great job and just a spark plug. Lassiter with game-changing speed, confidence through the roof. And it's three and two. Started the season absolutely raking at the plate. She had 441 in the first nine games of 2024. Let's it be outside and that's what Ole Miss wants from their leadoff hitter, just to get on base. Not the way you want to start if you're Shelby Winters to allow a leadoff walk to the speedy Jayla Lassiter. We'll see if they do a little small ball here. Weak little grounder, first base side, and a flip to nobody. It trickles down the right field line. The throw from Kearney's high. Lassiter comes home. She scores. Ole Miss leads early on the miscue by Georgia's defense. Yeah, just a miss hit here. And Digby thinks that Kuma is going to be over covering first, but it wasn't a bunt. So Kuma heads over to second. Jayla Lassiter takes advantage of that miscue and comes all the way home from first. I can see why Digby would think someone's there. Normally someone's supposed to be Absolutely. at first base. And if you follow the ball, so whatever the call was, it doesn't matter. Batter out of the box was what was being reviewed. Hey, I got it down you got good. It down. I yeah. got it. That's why you're here, Missy. Thank you so much. <laughs> so Jayla Lassiter does score. Here's the swing. Yeah, clearly she was still in the box. So good call. Uh, you can't blame head coach Tony Baldwin for trying but Ole Miss gets the early lead here. They give Jaden Pone the hit as Paige Smith tugs this into Ole Miss's bullpen. 
So that goes down as a single for Pone. She advanced to second on a throwing error and Lassiter scores on the air, so it is unearned. Paige Smith had the clutch hit yesterday in the bottom half of the seventh that tied the game at seven for Ole Miss. That forced extra innings. She was stranded as the winning run on second base. Her average is 258, and she's two for seven in this series against Georgia. Another one inside that she pulls. But Jamie Traxel said, you know, she goes through, it's every year, she goes through these phases where she hits the ball super hard, Missy, but it's just right at defenders. That's why we keep her there in that three spot because we know what she's capable of. Oh, absolutely. She's had such a fantastic career here at Ole Miss. Loops this up the middle, and it's caught by the shortstop, Armistead. And Lexi Brady comes up. Well, rumor has it, Missy, they're still trying to find Lexi Brady's 10th home run from yesterday. It was a no-doubt shot, and they're still trying to find it. Whether what, it left, yeah. left the atmosphere, we, we, we don't know. Maybe it's still circling. It's, it it was quite the... <laughs> Quite the jack out of the ballpark yesterday. Tenth home run of the season in game two. Her and Ansley Furbush, who's on deck, went back to back. I don't even think uh, Jaden Good and Goodwin turned around. She just knew it was gone from the minute it left the bat. Brady, a 277 hitter now after yesterday. Her 10 homers, a career most in a season, also 29 RBIs most in a, in a year. <laughs> Sits on the 2-1 pitch and the count's even. That was a pretty change up by Walters. You're gonna have to use that a little bit more today to keep the these Ole Miss hitters off balance. That could have went either way. That was a close pitch, three and two. It sure was, just a little bit down in the zone. Walters, a Duke transfer, her second year at Georgia. Preseason All-SEC this year, and she gets Brady swinging for strike three. Uh, there's that changeup I was talking about, and she uses it effectively there to get Lexi Brady to swing right over the top of it. Now batting the designated player, number 18, Ansley Brings up the DP, Ansley Furbush, who just got some advice from Lexi Brady on her way to the plate. And unintentionally goes around, nothing in one. Well, Ansley Furbush has been on fire in the SEC. She's batting 409 with a 727 slugging percentage. Hmm. It leads the team in RBIs and is tied with Lexi Brady with two home runs. So whatever she's doing at the plate in these conference games is really working. In fact, she was the only hit in that first game against that outstanding performance by Lily Backus. Yeah, with two outs in the seventh, Furbush broke the no-hitter. Grounder to second base, Kuma takes care of it. There's out. It's just been a fantastic opportunity and job that he's done at Georgia. Jaden Goodwin takes outside for ball one. And the one thing he mentioned to us too is the challenge that he's set out for his team is how to grow under strength. And that's, it's hard to perform under strain, right? And <laughs> especially when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year old uh, college students. That's hard hard grounder back to Cleetham as she reacted quickly and threw out Goodwin in the first base. Yeah, absolutely. He, he has challenged his team to grow and, and uh, taught them how to play under strain. 
and that when that fire hits, they're ready to, to tackle it together. And I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, you're a team. you got to handle things as a team. And the better off you are, the closer knit you are without drama, then the easier it is to handle those challenges. Ellie Armistead fouls off the first pitch. He also mentioned with their non-conference schedule too, they, they knew that that would be the key. If they could get through that successfully, and, and they all, they did with only four losses, right, or three losses, right? And he said, you know, if if I could be, what, 22 and three after our non-conference schedule, if you would have told me that at the beginning of the season, I would have gone to the beach and <laughs> right. just relaxed a little bit. <laughs> right, and and that's just a tribute to what how he's trained his team to tackle some of those obstacles that you're going to face, not only in non-conference play, but the grind of conference play that you're going to see weekend in and weekend out from here on to the end of the season. Fouled off, two and two. Yeah, Coach Baldwin said they had a lot of conversations and education with their players on how to stay focused in, in the big moments and, and, and while while they're in it. Like you said, you mentioned the fire, Missy. When they're in the fire, how to deal with getting out and how to survive. Checked at it and no appeal from Lexi Brady behind the plate, three and two. You know, and all the, the top 25 teams that they've played to this point has prepared them for SEC play, and uh, you know it, it, it's been impressive, especially from what we've seen from them this weekend. Lexi Brady thought that was strike three, so she threw down to first base like they were going to throw around to celebrate the strikeout, but instead Ellie Armistead is on first with the walk. Well, Armistead checked her swing, and I think that might have been some of the confusion that Lexi Brady thought she might have gone around. The pitch was a little bit down and in the zone. That brings up Sydney Chambly, who's had a hit in her last three games now, and a hit in five of her last seven. Corners play in for Ole Miss, first pitch strike. We saw her in game one in a pinch hitting role where she struck out against Caitlin Riley. March has not been kind to Chambly. She's seven for 34 at the plate this month. In February, she hit 351. 11 for 33 to begin the season. But throughout the course of a long season, and she fouls that off, Missy, and you know this too. I mean, there there are highs and lows, there are dips, and there are hills. <laughs> and when you play sixty something games in a year, you're going to have you know a, a one eighty two month and then a three fifty one <laughs> right. month at the plate. Right. You hope that that three eighty is during the end of the season <laughs> and not you know at the beginning or the middle. You want to finish on fire, but uh, you know softball is a fail sport. You're going to fail seven out of ten times, you know, and you're a good hitter. So you have to accept those failures and learn from them and be better the next time you come up to the plate. And I think that's the hardest thing for an 18 to 22-year-old to understand is that you know, hey, I get it. You want to be perfect, but guess what? It's not going to happen. So, you know, relish in those successes and learn from those failures. The person you even idolized growing up did not bat a thousand. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right. If you look at baseball, look at Tony Gwynn. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, he was one of the best hitters in baseball, and guess what? Second strikeout of the afternoon for McKenna Cleithermas. 
This is a much better outing from McKenna Cleethermis so far today. She uses that drop ball on the outside part of the plate to get Chambly swinging for the second out of the inning. Emily Digby comes up for the first time since her home run that she had yesterday in game two. A wee bit tight, not one and oh. They could be just a freshman too. Getting baptized by fire, I guess you could say, with the tough non-conference slate and also the tough SEC schedule too. I mean, 30 games she's played in. This is game 31 for her. Well, you see a lot of games during your time playing summer ball and, and all that, but it's, this is just a different level, and sometimes it's difficult to adapt, but she's done a tremendous job of stepping in and holding down the fort at first base and, and staying in the lineup, knowing the talent that's on this Georgia team. The first 13 games of her career Missy, she hit 353. I mean, my gosh, she looks slow there and, and is ahead three and one. And against the slate that they face, to hit 353 in your first 13 college games. Absolutely, she's stepped in and and done what she's needed to do, and and that's a a, a tribute to Tony Baldwin and and his coaching. Boy, that was just foul three and two. She had a good swing on that inside pitch. Just yanked it a little bit too much foul. Yesterday was her third home run of her young career. And the two homers that she hit before yesterday's were against Virginia Tech earlier this year. Swings and misses. Strike three, and that ends the inning. Both teams sporting pink today. Ole Miss with navy blues and pink. Georgia with the pink and black look today as Delaney Rummel leads things off for Ole Miss here in the second inning. Hitting 283 coming into today. Chops this one left side, backhanded by Armistead. She has no play at first. And Delaney Rummel's on first base safely to begin the second inning. That was a a nice try, it just goes right under the glove of Sarah Mosley and just not a chance too deep in the hole for Armistead to make the throw over to get Rummel at first base. Jamie McKay steps up now as they give Rummel the single. Her 27th hit this season. And Delaney Rummel's fourth hit against the SEC. She transferred in from Illinois. And now that's, now Rummel sets up the table for Jamie McKay, hitting 329 on this Sunday afternoon. And we talked about it in the opening. Ole Miss really struggled in that first game, you know, having one hit against Lily Backus, but they broke it open. They found the answer in that second game against Shelby Walters, against Madison Kerpix, and they've continued it into today. Yesterday they broke out for 12 hits and seven runs. And today already two hits, putting pressure on this Georgia defense. McKay pops this up down the first baseline and it's easy for Digby, out number one. And if you talk to anybody around the Ole Miss clubhouse, Missy, yesterday they had the game-winning run on second base in the bottom of the seventh inning. They had the opportunity to, and you, you play the would've, could've, should've game, but <laughs> right. you know, coming into today, we could've had a rubber match. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know, as I always say, if some butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry <laughs> Christmas, right? <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's a matter of just putting the bat on the ball and barreling it up, and they did a great job of coming back and and tying that game against Georgia. They just couldn't manufacture that last run to take the ball game. Angelina De Leon, her stats this season, 179 hitter. 
Counts one and one. What was that saying? Candy, nuts? If and candy yeah. and nuts were ifs and buts, we'd all have a Merry mm. Christmas. Yeah, the, the infamous ifs and buts. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Ifs and buts. Mm -hmm. Two and one to De Leon. <laughs> Ole Miss is ahead one to nothing. A defensive miscue back in the first inning. A little roller by Jaden Pone. First baseman, Emily Digby rushed it and flipped to nobody who was covering first base. Jayla Lassiter, who was on first base, came around to score after the miscue. Off the inside part of the bat, and Walters has trouble with it. De Leon safe. It's First base, Rummel moves up to second. That'll be Georgia's second error of the game. And just like I said, you know, Ole Miss putting the bat on the ball and putting it on the ground. Anybody can catch a can of corn, but you know, Georgia not fielding these ground balls cleanly and it's costed, costing them so far. Now Ole Miss has got runners at first and second with one out. Ryan Starr at the plate, takes upstairs. There you are with the sayings again. A, 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 a can and a corn and a can? can? A can of corn. Okay. You haven't heard that? No. All the baseball games? I You've never heard a fly ball being a can <laughs> of corn? Yeah, I guess I'm too old school for you. <laughs> Maybe I just didn't get out much. I doubt that. <laughs> Ryan Starr with 1-1 one, one count. Transfer from Syracuse, spent her freshman year up in New York. Just foul. One and two. Star yesterday was 0 for 2 against Georgia in both games. She did score a run though, but she did, she did not reach base when she scored the run. In fact, it was her pinch hitter who reached base and then Star re-entered and eventually scored. Two and two to her. Star only has four hits this month. Well, she only had one at bat in that game yesterday, the double header, or the second game of the double header. She grounded out to the shortstop. The other times, like you said, she was pinch hit for. So she hasn't had a chance to see Shelby Walters yet, she she actually faced Madison Kerpix. Runners on first and second base for Ole Miss. And it's a full count. What have you seen from Shelby Walters today? I mean, I know Georgia really hasn't played a clean first two innings. No, and... Uh, you know, she's doing a good job of getting ahead in the count, and then she's missing. And she's got to find closer spots that she can take ch take a chance on. Double play ball, no! Star is safe at first base. Kuma stepped on second base to retire De Leon, but Ryan Star is safe at first. Yeah, just too much speed from Ryan Star, and that play was really, really close. I'm not sure if uh, Tony Baldwin is going to challenge that, but it looks say. And the call has oh, been out. changed. Ryan Starr's out, so Sydney Kuba turns the double play to end this. Oh, you don't know. I don't know. I mean, I definitely would have put Tennessee number one and probably would have had Georgia two just because of the experience. Oh, both programs have a lot of returners that have come back, and so you knew that they were going to be stacked this year? I think stacked is the right word to to uh, say about this Georgia team. I mean, it just makes sense. 45% of their run production from last year returns. 52% of their home runs come back as well. That's it's pretty stacked. Oh, yeah. 
And, and we saw glimpses of that yesterday uh, when I had a chance to visit with head coach Tony Baldwin this morning. You know, you're, you're used to seeing Georgia get these big hits and hard line drives and home runs. And they got a lot of bloop singles yesterday that won the ball game for them. And so, um, you know, but it doesn't when ultimately it doesn't come down to to that it comes down to it, it doesn't matter whether it's it's pretty it's ugly or in between a win is a win is a win hard knock up the middle by goodnight and she begins this third inning with a leadoff single with her 19th hit of the season and now she has a hit in five of her last six games that's really not a bad pitch uh from mckenna clee thermos it's up in the zone and dallas goodnight keeps her hands up and is able to smoke that ball up center field for a single. Now batting the catcher number 11, Lindy Ray Davis. Good night coming off of seasons where she had over 40 hits in her first season at Alabama as a freshman. And then last year, her first season as a Bulldog, she had 48 hits. And now up to 19 this season. You got to be a little scared when Lindy Ray Davis comes up to bat this series, right, Missy, with the way that she's been disciplined at the plate, her just, clutchness factor as well in this series. Oh, absolutely. She is just so patient. Hard grounder foul. Her last at bat, she flied out to, to right field, just getting under that ball. But, I mean, can you imagine the power? She actually got a hold of one, how far that ball would go. See in her last five games, she's seven for 15 at the plate. 455 batting average. Uh, she has 12 walks in her last 10 games. And Runner breaks for second base. The throw down is in time. Ole Miss guns down the speedster. Good night. What a beautiful throw by Lexi Brady, that ball's up in the zone, and so she's able to come up, get it, and throw. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they review this. I don't know, has uh, uh, Tony, Tony Baldwin, used I don't... his two challenges? He may not be able, may not have any more. Well, he used one, but that was overturned, so he got it back. Uh, you don't get them back. Oh, you don't get them back. No. Oh, that's you, my, you, you that's, get, that's my fault. You get two and, and done. All right, so good night caught stealing. And Davis with a 2-2 count. But as I was saying about Davis, she had three of those walks yesterday in the first game. Ball four. And Lindy Ray Davis has done a lot of that this weekend. Second walk of the day for Cleethermis after she walked a season high seven batters yesterday in her start. Yeah, she's been much more effective today. It's had a lot cleaner innings. It doesn't hurt either that uh, they were able to throw out good night on that steal attempt to get the first out. Especially with Sarah Mosley at the plate. She's 0 for 1, but had a check swing, unintentional fly ball as she aired out to center field that was caught by Angelina De Leon. And she sends this high and deep down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. But she tugged it too much to the indoor hitting roof. Did that land on the roof? Yeah, it landed on the roof. That ball was hit a ton. There it is. Wow. I mean, how, how much feet? You can't really, <laughs> that, that camera angle doesn't show you how much space is in between the outfield wall and the hitting facility. Uh, yeah. 
I know when I was here and uh, Lauren Grill hit one of the furthest balls I've ever seen. And um, if you look at where the scoreboard is now, it went through those trees, <laughs> past the road. I, I mean, it was just, you talk about orbiting Earth. Mostly stays alive, one and two. Have a little bit better idea of how far the balls go with it sitting this way and the indoor being right there than in previous years when the field was turned. Fouled off again by Mosley. She continues to fight at the plate. Oh, we've talked about that. You know, you, you keep battling and battling and battling as a hitter, and you talk about their patience, but it also comes down to battling and finding that right pitch that you can drive. She leads the SEC in RBIs this year. She's fifth in the country. Here's the pitch. Sneaks it through that left side hole. And Mosley's on with the one out single. And that moves up Davis to second base. So you want to hear my ifs and buts? Let's hear it. If you hadn't have stolen that base, tried to stole, steal that base, you'd have either bases loaded or a tie ball game. Mm. Ifs and buts. Yep. But now you have Jada Kearney at the plate. So you can make up for it here. Kearney was very patient at the plate yesterday against Klee Thermos. Three of her walks, of her four walks yesterday that she had were off of Klee Thermos. Cuts and misses, one and one. Kearney preseason All-America coming into this year by D1 Softball and Softball America. And two healthy cuts, but she comes up empty. It's one and two. Yeah, looks like she's pulling her head a little bit. Tony Baldwin's been saying too. Her, she's swinging and missing more this year. She's already up. She was already up to 24 strikeouts coming into the season, and she had a career high 35 Ks last year and 159 at bats. Only struck out 22 times over sophomore year. But he's been noticing that swing and miss a little more from her this year. Well, she would be the true epitome of a power hitter, right? You're going to either get the big hit or you're going to get the strikeout, and. Um, you know, that has to go with her mindset. And what he talked about is, you know, she's getting better at not taking things so seriously. And I think that shows at the plate. This is what Georgia does at the plate. They just keep battling and battling to the point where they hope the pitcher just makes a mistake. That's right. And that's what good hitters do. You know, we've talked about it. You foul it off until you get something that you can drive, and the pitcher makes a mistake. There's a mistake. It's two and two. That was close. That ball didn't miss by much. And a little out, maybe a little up. I don't think so. More so out, but that's a good take. Almost too close to take, though, for Kearney. Back to Cleet Thermis with the backhand. Gets the lead runner at third. Two away. The second one today that's been sent back to her on the ground. Yeah, that's a great job by Cleet Thermis. Heads up to get the lead out. Lead runner out at third base. Preventing another runner getting into scoring position for Georgia. 
So now one of the best hitters in the conference and Sydney Kuma comes up. On D1 softball's top 100 players this season, they ranked her the 36th best in the country. Eyes up a first pitch strike. She struck out looking her first go around. Well, and she's just been seeing the ball so well this weekend. An FCA third-team All-American for the first time in her career last year. Oh, that hits her. She didn't lean into it either. Bases are now loaded for Georgia. Two gone. Down one nothing to Ole Miss. And that brings up Jaden Goodwin. Cleetherm is trying to challenge on the inside part of the plate and just too much. Goodwin hit her first career grand slam earlier this week against Georgia Southern. 0 for 1 today. She bounced out back to Cleetherm inside the circle. Thought about it. Oh, she's, Cleet Thermos is working the ball down and out in the zone, trying to get Goodwin to bite, but they're just a little bit low and a little bit too much outside. Three balls, no strikes. This is a great at bat by Goodwin, just really patient. Putting Cleethermus here in a hole. She's got to come back in over the zone or Georgia ties this ball game. Cleethermus needed that. Yeah, I think that's a good take by Goodwin. Fouls off the 3-1. And Cleethermus, one pitch away from either tying this game, giving up the lead, or getting out of the inning. No pressure? No, not at all. But you know, you put yourself in that situation by not getting ahead of the hitter. So. Hear that Georgia dugout chirping. Beware of dog. Beware of the dog. That's what Cleethermus is trying to beware of on this pitch. Up one nothing. Ball four, tie game. That's just a great at bat by Goodwin. Started off being really. And Ellie Armistead, no slouch to the plate either. Hitting 361 coming into, into today. Chance for Georgia to take their first lead this afternoon. Now you you look at Clee Thermos, what's your mindset? Oh, you know, you just allowed yourself to tie the ball game because you didn't get ahead of the hitter. Now, are you gonna come back strong? She comes back strong with that first pitch strike, but she's gotta finish out this at bat. Well, she's ahead nothing and two. So Cleether miss ahead on Armistead, who walked in her last time up back in the second inning. You know, we, we talked about Carl Golan and, and how much the pitching staff loves him and how he's worked on their mentality. And this is a scenario where you got to finish it and flush it. And there she did. Cleet? Jayla Lassiter. No, definitely not. Kerpex is the new pitcher now for Georgia. Madison Kerpex, she pitched yesterday, started game two through three innings and allowed two earned runs, including two home runs back to back. For the first time this season, she allowed two home runs in one outing to Lexi Brady and Ansley Furbush. Well, she's a veteran of the staff and you're gonna see her throw a curve, a drop, a screw, a rise and She's gonna throw 63 to 65. 
Davis tried to frame that pitch on the outside. Those are Kerpex's numbers. Eight and one coming into this relief outing. ERA just above 200. Strike call to Lassiter. Both Walters who started this game in Kerpix were all SEC last year. As Lassiter off the end of the bat, pops it up in the air and it's handled by Kuma for out number one. Friday night, it's another SEC Network baseball game of the week with number one Arkansas hosting number five LSU, the second game of their three game series. And coverage begins at 8 Eastern right here in the SEC Network and the ESPN app. The Diamond Sports are truly, I mean, I know they say Missy, it just means more in the SEC, but when it comes to the Diamond Sports, I mean, it, <laughs> The level of competition, the amount of passion from the fan bases, it really does just mean more. Absolutely, and it's going to mean more even than it does this year, next year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's not like you're, you're adding two major college brands next year. It's not like you're adding some so-so brands. You were adding two of the biggest in Texas and Oklahoma, especially when it comes to softball. Oh, oh absolutely. Pone flies this to the left side, and it's off the tip of the glove of Mosley. And Jaden Pone will see another pitch. Well, and that's just the lack of communication between Mosley and Armistead. Now you've given Jaden Pone an extra life here at bat. Shows bunt and fouls that off. Jamie Traxel said that Jaden Pone, when she came on her visit, when she entered the transfer portal, she came alone without any parents. Hey, come on, Jaden. And Jamie said, you know, should we meet your parents? We just want to know, we just want them to be okay with who they're loaning their daughter to. <laughs> <laughs> and Jaden said, no, it's okay. My parents trust me in my decision process. That change up just missing on the outside part of the plate. Good discipline by Jaden Pone. Strike three call, got her looking. Out number two here in the third. I don't know if uh, Pone was looking for something different, but that ball was right there. That brings up Paige Smith. 0 for 1 today with a pop out. That strike hits the corner, nothing in one. One of seven players in Ole Miss history with 100 career hits and 100 career RBIs. And she skies this to shallow left. Who's got it? It's Armistead, the shortstop with her uh, earlier this week. I said, so who are, you who are you rooting for, Savannah? <laughs> she said, you know, it's just kind of a, it's a tough question to answer. You Double know? edged sword. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but obviously she is cheering for whoever writes her paycheck. So um, that, that's, that's the start, right? right? <laughs> but no, she talked about her experience with us earlier this week, Missy, and she had a great experience in Athens, Georgia. And, um, an awesome experience with Jamie Traxel and, and here in Oxford, Mississippi, and as Chambly grounds that foul. But, uh, you know, when you face your alma mater, it, it is tough sometimes because you, you still hang on to those memories that you made at uh, your first stop, and then you also enjoy and you're grateful for your second stop as well. Oh, absolutely, and it, she was a, a great impact for this old Miss team while she was here. She still knows some of the players on Ole Miss's roster this year. And I said, has that been tough, you know, to, to separate staff from your friendship with them this year? And she admitted, yeah, I mean, it, it's a little tough because. Well, it is hard because you're so close to their yeah. age. And, and, you know, they look at you as a, 
a friend and not a not a coach. So it does make it makes the transition tough. Even when she would when she leaves and maybe goes somewhere else, you know, they still look at her as being close to their age and it's hard to to get that separation. It's probably one of the toughest things in coaching. Especially the, the social aspect of it, right? I mean, you, can't, you really can't uh, hang out with those right. with your friends who are still right. on the team. Right, no partying <laughs> together. <laughs> well, okay, I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> you, you, uh. <laughs> yep, you just can't go out and party with your friends anymore. <laughs> the hardest thing about being a, a D-Ops is you know, making sure the, the travel and everything goes smoothly when when you're on the road. She said the one thing that was weird about this weekend was normally Ole Miss's coaching staff, they drop off crumble cookies at the hotel for the visiting team. And <laughs> she walked into the hotel with the cookies and the coaching staff right away just said, oh, this is weird. You know, you're on the opposing coaching right, staff. Right. You're delivering us cookies, <laughs> not wearing Georgia gear. This is weird. But yeah. they, all, they all had a fun laugh about it. Well, that's good. Chambly takes low. And what do you know, another full count to a Georgia Bulldog today. And I think that's just been the struggles over the last two days for Ole Miss as they get they get out in front of these hitters and the for Georgia and they're so patient they work it back to a full count. Hacks and misses for strike three. And a good response to start this fourth inning for McKenna Cleethermis after she walked the bases loaded and walked in a run. Yeah, absolutely. She gets Chambly to bite on that pitch that's down and out in the zone. We talk about the Georgia hitters being so disciplined. Chambly a little bit anxious on that strike three pitch. Speaking of sep uh, a second opportunity at a second school, McKenna Cleethermis began her career at Oregon, transferred to Ole Miss. And she faces Emily Digby, who's 0 for 1 today with the strikeout. I asked her, how does a small town girl from Missouri end up on the West Coast out in Eugene, Oregon? And she said there really was nothing to it. They just they saw my numbers from high school. She was really, really good in high school. And they gave her a call and she said, you know, sure, why not? But she made that trip a couple of times from Eugene to Missouri. And uh, it's that's a that's, long way. that's a long way. That's yeah. not an hour and a half away from home, Missy. Yeah, that's that's tough. And, and got softball and they've just challenged over the past, you know, maybe 10 years. And and so those two conferences have always been, you know, right there at the top. And so, um, you know, when you don't have an SEC school calling you, then the Pac-12 is the next best thing, right? Oh. Now there's no more Pac-12. Yeah, now there's the- to Make me tear up. The, the Pac-0. Yeah. yeah. After this year, for sure. A four-pitch walk to Emily Digby. And one out, one one on now for Georgia in the fourth inning. We're tied up at one. We're going to see a pitching change. Yeah, Carl Golan out of the dugout. And he points to his bullpen. We'll see a new pitcher. Cleethermis' day for now is done. But we will see. Up and you'll see her mix that in, trying to keep these Georgia hitters off balance. Not to mention, you're gonna see a different perspective with her throwing from the left side. There's Clee Thermos, reigning SEC co-pitcher of the week after she had a fantastic outing and outings at LSU last weekend. Uh, I mean, she has nothing to hold her head down about today. She really, like I said, had a good outing. It's just that third inning, giving up that one run because of walks and hit batters was the only downfall. Two and one to Dallas Goodnight, who singled back in the third inning. It's runner on first base, one down. Sydney Chambly began this fourth inning with a strikeout. And there's that changeup that I talked about with Brianna Lopez. You know, you have McKenna Cleethermis who throws in the upper 60s, and then you turn around and you have uh, Brianna Lopez coming in from the left side, and then also 
not throw as hard in the low 60s. And there she sits down. Good night with two consecutive change-ups. That's a great start for Brianna Lopez. Oh, just see, <laughs> see Good night's knees just buckle with that change-up. That's just a great job. And now the ever so patient but brutally dangerous hitter, Lindy Ray Davis at the plate. Sits on the first pitch. Quiet today though, Missy. She does have a walk. She's 0 for 1, but we saw the damage that she's capable of doing yesterday at the plate. Basically the game winning hit for Georgia in extra innings in game two. Bases loaded, she cleared him with a gapper to left center. And that ended Ole Miss's hopes of an upset win in our doubleheader yesterday. Well, you talked about patience. She had several walks off of Brianna Lopez yesterday. Here again, she's patient, working the count to one. But we, we talk about Brianna Lopez and McKenna Cleithermas, and we talked yesterday during one of the breaks that it was a, I was a little surprised that they started Brianna Lopez knowing that, you know, you have the, the change with going from fast to slow. Yesterday, they did slow to fast. What an effort by Brady behind home plate to try to catch that little bloop off the bat of Davis. Yeah, it really was. She laid out trying to catch that ball and... Just a great job, just to the other side of her. Please be careful. Be, be a little bit more careful. Yeah. Try not to slam your head on the ground yep. when you dive for the ball. Two and two count to Davis with two outs. Runner on first base for Georgia. And Davis takes strike three on the outside edge. Out number three. Lexi Brady leads things off for Ole Miss here in the fourth inning. Faces Kerpix back inside the circle for the Bulldogs. Brady 0 for 1 today. Picks falls behind Brady here, 3-0. Think she'll have the green light? That's more of a question for you to answer. <laughs> the answer is no. No. <laughs> but with the power, home run power that she has, I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Well, there's another hitter's count right here, 3-1. Last pitch was a changeup from Kerpix. It's ball four next weekend. Trying to salvage one today in a three game series with Georgia dropping the double header yesterday. Georgia was one out away. Lily Backus one out short of no hitting Ole Miss. And the Rebels were down five going into the sixth inning. They battled back, they forced extras. Had the winning run at second base. Couldn't bring her around. Georgia, bases clearing double with bases loaded by Lindy Ray Davis, and that sealed the deal. And Georgia with already the series win, looking for the sweep today. That missed, two and one. Ansley Furbush at the plate. Ground no. out her last time up. Sorry, I don't think Davis was very happy. That pitch looked like it was right over the outside part of the plate turned back to look at home plate umpire Mayer. Furbush gets under this, down the left field line, but she yanked it too much. Didn't hit the roof though, it doesn't look like. Didn't hit the roof. <laughs> George's Sarah Mosley hit the roof on a foul ball earlier in this game.
2-2. Chases it downstairs, but fouls it off. Furbush offensively in this series is three for eight. Did have that home run yesterday. Did take her fourth loss of the season, though, in the circle yesterday. She threw 105 pitches. In game two, she came in in relief as Furbush calls time. She's tearing it up in SEC play. Batting 409 with a 727 slugging percentage. Stay back. Full count. I think we talked about it her last time up. She was the only person to get a hit in that first game against Lily Backus. Called strike three outside corner. First Furbush was on her way to first base. Well, it was a nice pitch. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe Furbush thought it was a little bit more outside, but it looked like it was right on the outside corner. Another changeup from Kerpix. Delaney Rummel chops this foul to start. We were talking about it in between breaks, too. I mean, Georgia doesn't swing in a lot of bad pitches, and even in that last inning, there were some... There were some 50-50 balls that could have gone both ways, and yeah. I think that was one of them too against Furbush. Yeah, absolutely questionable, and you saw uh, Lindy Ray Davis strike out in the last inning looking, and that's just, she gets her hacks when she's up there, so a little surprising that she looked at one go by. Hard hit ball on the ground. Armistead with the backhand. I think she has time, but can't beat out Rummel down the first baseline. Oh, it was a good job of Armistead to go to her right, but that little bobble cost her and Georgia the out at first base of Rummel. It was a good effort to stay with it, but just not enough time after, like I said, she bobbled that ball. It's up to Jamie McKay with runners on first and second base, one away. And a tie game, one to one. Oh, Ole Miss has a runner in scoring position with Lexi Brady. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. She's a big girl, but she's got wheels. So outfield, if there's a ball hit to the outfield, they need to be charging. And hey, you guys hit. They give Armistead the error on that play. That's three errors already for Georgia in this game. I was just about to say, they came into the weekend with the third best fielding percentage in the SEC, 17th best in the country at 978. Not the case today. No, again, Ole Miss doing a good job of putting the ball in play, putting pressure on Georgia, and they're just not making the plays. McKay, hard shot down the third base line, but foul. When you have pitchers who are giving you an opportunity to win, you have to make plays behind them. And already, you know, we've seen an error at shortstop and an error at, they, I mean, they gave that error to uh, Digby at first base, but it was really a mental error by Kuma at second to not come over and cover that, which gave Ole Miss the first run of the ball game. Full count to McKay. McKay lofts. This down the left field line. Goodwin pursuing, but out of play. McKay's two for five in the series. 0 for one today. And last weekend in the 
series upset that uh, uh, Ole Miss had against LSU. McKay was two for nine. Just gets a piece of this. And McKay's battling at the plate. That's almost like McKay's taking a little piece of Georgia advice and battling until she can find some that she can drive. Potentially give Ole Miss a lead in this ball game. Crushes it to third off the sleeve of Mosley. That's a fair ball. Brady around third. The play at the plate is in time. Davis tagged her out. Yeah, this ball is a rocket and just gets past Mosley. But Armistead able to stay with it. And she gets the throw in to Davis at home for the out of Lexi Brady. Head coach Jamie Traxel trying to make something happen there by sending Lexi Brady home. So with two outs, Angelina De Leon comes up with the leading runs on third at second and third for Ole Miss in the fourth inning. Hot shot off the bat. It's caught by Mosley. Inning over. This one one tie. I mean, right, Missy, they kind of avoided disaster there. Could have oh, been. Oh, yeah, it could have been really, really ugly. But that was a great play by Mosley. And a great heads up play by Armistead to stay with that ball and get it home in time to get Lexi Brady out at the plate. Here's Mosley at the plate. Flies this to the right side, but almost caught by McKay. She was pursuing that. Sarah Mosley now 243 hits in her career. She singled back in the third inning. She's now tied with Sydney Emanuel for 10th all time in career hits in Georgia history. Now she's one away from ninth all time. Alisa Goler had 244 from 20, uh, 2008 to 2011. Yeah, I know that name. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, she was a tremendous hitter for Georgia. You'd think Georgia's record book is just loaded with talented players that it would be so hard to move up at all in their record book or at least get your name in some kind of uh, some kind of record sure it uh, there was there's been a lot of talent that has come through that program strike three call on the outside edge in her relief stint Missy and all three are backwards K's yeah it, it, that is uh, for me to see Georgia do that, a little bit unusual. I mean, granted, they did have seven strikeouts in the second game and nine in the, the first game, but uh, looking, we didn't see a lot of that yesterday. Jada Kearney ahead, 2-0. and One for two today, single in the first, reached on the fielder's choice back in the third. Just like that, she's ahead 3-0. Well, we saw her patience at the plate in the second game yesterday, earning four walks. There's a walk. Her first of the day and the first walk today for Lopez. Lopez walked six Bulldogs yesterday in her start in game one, missing. You don't want that walk bite or that walk bug to hit you now. No, definitely not. And that's what got Clee Thermos in trouble in the third inning is a couple of walks and a hit batter. Cindy Kuma was that hit batter back in the third. Looks at a strike, nothing in one.
Two quick strikes from Lopez. Yeah, just a steady diet of change-ups from Lopez. I mean, you're going from seeing Clee Thermos, who's throwing in the upper 60s, and then there's a 45-mile-an-hour pitch from Brianna Lopez. That's a huge difference when you're at the plate. Kuma gets a piece of it, still alive, nothing in two. Signed with Georgia in the fall of 2019, they offered her her sophomore year of high school. Puts the bat on the ball, tag at first base, the throw to second base, and they get Kearney for the double play to end the inning. Game go. Almost let the game, the game almost got away from her. Okay, we'll, we'll there, there that. you go. Yeah, that's a much better a way of putting one. it. Yep. But Lily Backus is, is a very, very talented lefty for Georgia. She absolutely is. She's not going to overpower you. She's going to really spin the ball. She's got to rise, a curve, a change up. And her go-to is her changeup. It's one of the best in the country. So where you saw with Old Miss, McKenna Cleetherm is throwing really hard and then coming in with Brianna Lopez, it's kind of a similar option here where you have start out with Shelby Walters, who's throwing 70, and then Kerpix, who throws in the mid to upper 60s. And now you have... Lily Backus, who's going to stay in that lower 60s range with that phenomenal changeup. Complete game shutout of Ole Miss yesterday in game one of our doubleheader. Allowed that one hit with two outs in the seventh. As Starr puts it in play, left side, there's Mosley. Throw to first is in time as Starr tried to dive for the bag to beat out the throw, but instead she's retired on the 5-3 put out. Well, it was a great effort by Ryan Starr. I've really not, never liked diving into the bags, especially first base, because it's quicker to run through it, but um, still a great effort, just trying to beat out that slow roller to Mosley at third. Lassiter loops this to, into the gap in right center field. And a one-out single for Jayla Lasseter, her first hit this afternoon. She did score the first run of the ball game for Ole Miss back in the first inning. And this 1-1 tie. We saw, saw Ole Miss do this yesterday, first pitch swinging. So obviously they've picked up on something uh, with Lily Backus uh, to make the adjustment at the plate. Jaden Pone at the dish now for Ole Miss. She too attacks the first pitch. Jaden Pone in her time at Longwood, she was named Big South Player of the Year last year and Big South Freshman of the Year in 2022. Those are her stats entering the weekend. She's been a great addition to this Ole Miss team. Just puts the bat on the ball. Back is outside the circle, twists and does not get Pone at first base. Although Lily Backus came off the rubber quickly and out of the circle, just not enough time to get the speedy pone, and Ole Miss has got something brewing here in the bottom of the fifth. Paige Smith tied the game for Ole Miss yesterday in game two of our doubleheader. That forced extra innings. She flies this out to center field. And Goodnight makes the catch. Lassiter tags from second base. The throw is late. Pone moves up to second base. And with one down, or two down rather, Lexi Brady comes up for Ole Miss with runners on second and third. Well, and you saw as soon as that ball hit, Lassiter goes back to second base knowing that she's going to tag up and go as soon as that ball is caught by Goodnight in center field. Great ab uh, aggressive base running by Ole Miss. Brady sits on it, 1-0. Just a walk today for Brady. Struck out in her first time up, back in the first inning. Oh, 
Backus was just unstoppable in game one yesterday. Threw two innings of work and relief, allowed two earned runs to Ole Miss. They figured her out in game two. To Mosley at third, she gobbles it up and throws across to first. Rocket to Sarah Mosley for a line drive out, but it, it, at least they're putting the ball in play and they're doing the things they need to do. Typically in games like this, it's who makes the first mistake that ends up losing the ball game, right? So um, both teams just got to keep battling and, and plugging away and try and push a run across. Jaden Goodwin at the plate, 0 for 1 today. She walked with the bases loaded. That got her an RBI back in the third inning and also tied this game at 1. Ole Miss took their first lead of the series back in the first inning. And Goodwin fouls us off to the right. Jayla Lasseter back in that first inning for Ole Miss reached on a walk. Jane Pone hit a single. That Digby, the first baseman for Georgia, flipped to who she thought was covering the first base back, Kuma, but no one was there. And that allowed Lasseter to to motor around the bases and come home. Another dribbler foul, one and two. Well, if you compare weekends for Georgia, last weekend they took two of three games from Alabama winning the first two. And then when we spoke to Tony Baldwin about Sunday's game, he said that they just didn't do what they needed to do. Fourth strikeout looking in this relief stint for Brianna Lopez. They just didn't uh, attack the same way and I, it, we're seeing that today. They've made three errors, haven't made any errors in the previous two games and not putting the bat on the ball like they did in the two games uh, yesterday. So just kind of a different team from Georgia that we're seeing today. Armistead wanted the bunt, nothing in one. Just a walk today for Armistead. She struck out looking back in the third inning. That ended the third inning with bases loaded for Georgia. Both teams have had their opportunities today. With runners on base, just haven't been able to get that big hit. Well, just three hits today for Georgia, where yesterday we saw them explode for 25 hits on mm. the day. You can attribute that to Ole Miss maybe coming out and being better in the circle today, mm -hmm. limiting the walks and the opportunities for Georgia. Offensively, both teams, Georgia is one for nine with runners on base. 0 oh for two with runners in scoring position. It doesn't really get much better for Ole Miss. Three for 14 with runners on base. One for eight when they're in scoring position. Weekly chopped left side. And the third baseman, Rummel, takes care of Armistead at first base for the 5-3 put out. Boy, Georgia hasn't gone in order at all this afternoon, and now they have two down with Sidney Chambly at the plate, who's struck out twice today. And... As I say that, a new hitter comes up to bat. I was just going to say, I think that uh, Jaden Fields is coming up to uh, pinch hit for Chambly. She's been struggling at the plate with two strikeouts. The sister of pro quarterback Justin Fields, who just got traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers this offseason. Her and Justin both went to Georgia, but they didn't overlap. In fact, Jaden committed to Georgia first, way before Justin even did. And by the time Justin entered the transfer portal and Jaden was on her way to Georgia, Justin had committed to Ohio State. 
sorry, the Ohio State. The, yeah, I get it right. Yep. You and ought to know since you went to the school. <laughs> oh, no, no I, I, never, I didn't go there, no. No, uh, you went to Ohio University, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, the Ohio University. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, when <laughs> Justin was moving out of his uh, dorm at Georgia, Jaden was moving in. So as they unloaded all of Jaden's stuff out of the truck, they loaded all of Justin's stuff into the truck to <laughs> wow. move him to Columbus, which I thought was an interesting story. That is interesting. She committed to Georgia in eighth grade going into her freshman year of high school. Very talented family. Younger sister, too, that just, uh, I believe, won the state title this past uh, high school girls basketball season. Out in front of that pitch, it's two and two. Well, yesterday, Jaden got the hit that started the scoring for Georgia against Brianna Lopez. Lopez has made a living on the outside corner in this stint. She did not get the call there, though. It was close. Uh, that's a tough pitch to take if you're Jaden Field. She does a good job of laying off of that, bringing the count full three to two. So talking about her brother, do you think mm -hmm. it's going to be a competition between he and Russell Wilson? Oh, the always. Pittsburgh? Swings through it, strike three. And Brianna Lopez. That's exactly right. And Ensley Furbush gets the first hit off of uh, Lily Backus, but here she flies out to Kearney in right field for the first out of the sixth inning. Well, swinging at the first pitch worked for Ole Miss back in the fifth against Backus. Jayla Lasseter reached on the first pitch, and then Jaden Pone just saw two pitches, but did not work for Furbush there. Delaney Rummel comes up to bat one for two today. Single, and she's reached on an error. Rumble's ahead, 2-0. Oh. Rips this to right, and it gets down in front of Kearney. And a one-out single for Delaney Rummel off of Lily Backus. Uh, Backus gets behind, and just this ball is up in the zone, and Rummel is able to drive it out to right field for a base hit. She is two for three today. I was just about to say that too. March has been a slow month for Rummel, but she's starting to find her groove at the plate. As Jamie McKay steps in with the single today. Sky to center. And Goodnight battles the sun, makes the catch for out number two. Angelina De Leon comes up. She smoked a line drive right to Sarah Mosley at third base back in the fourth inning that ended the inning. As Davis comes out to have a chat with Backus. Oh, Ole Miss has been very aggressive on the first pitch strike offerings from Lily Backus. It started yesterday and uh, hitting coach Daniel Nicolaisen is very analytical and has that mindset. And so I'm sure he's picked up on something uh, on these Georgia pitchers with the help of Carl Golan, their first pitch swinging, and we see it again. Kuma underneath the pop. She's, like you said, hitting her spots, finding the zone, and working in that changeup. She's offering a steady diet of changeups to these Georgia hitters, and so far it's been working. On the flip side of this for Georgia, what approach do the Bulldogs have to take here? Because 
since Lopez has come in, they've not had a hit since the fourth inning. Well, I normally wouldn't give this advice to a player because I don't think it's appropriate for you to go up there looking for a particular pitch. But if somebody's going to throw you a steady diet like that, I think I would sit on the changeup. And if she decides to bust you in or out with a, uh, you know, a 63 mile an hour pitch, then go for it. I'm going to sit on that change and try and drive it. Hmm. Emily Digby at the plate. She's ahead in the count, two and one. Now I will say Brianna Lopez is doing a really good job though of mixing her pitches. You see there it was a 63 mile an hour, looked like a rise ball. And then you see pitches that are in the 52 mile an hour range and then there are change ups down to the 45. So she's really doing a good job of spinning the ball, but there she allows her second walk of the ball game to Digby. And when you're a pitcher, traffic is going to happen. You're not going to all the time have bases empty. But now it's yeah, how she responds right. from it, here. That, that's true. But you don't want to allow those freebies. Mm -hmm. And that was the freebie. Hannah Davila comes in to pinch run for Digby at first base. And Dallas Goodnight comes up to bat for the Bulldogs. I think you can anticipate a little short game going on here, possibly. So you see the corners for Ole Miss playing in. There it is. She's off the bag at first base. Snap throw down, but Davila's back in time. She was leaning over that way, though. Had a very big lead at first base. It was worth the throw down from Brady. Nothing in one to good night. Shows here, it's a beauty. Fielded by Rommel, her throws to the sidewall. Davila's on her way to third, she stays there. Off to seconds, good night. That was a great bunt by good night. Just out in front of the plate, Rommel does a good job, but lets that ball sail on her over the head of De Leon out to right field. McKay doing a good job of backing up, but now Georgia's got runners at second and third and nobody out. That's called putting pressure on the defense, Jake. And with Lindy Ray Davis coming up to bat who had the game winning hit for Georgia last night Bases loaded, game two, extra innings, sealed the deal, won the series for Georgia with the bases clearing double to left center. They give Goodnight the hit. So now she has two hits today. Now batting the catcher, number 11, Lindy Ray Davis. Chance to give the Bulldogs the lead. When I said it earlier, it's gonna come down to who makes the mistake. And right now, Ole Miss is making the mistake. Are they gonna be able to get out of it? There we see that patience that we've talked about all weekend long of Lindy Ray Davis working the count 2-0, putting herself in a favorable position to get a good pitch from Lopez. Wanted that one, two and one. Yeah, Lopez just pulls the string on that. Pretty change up. Brady framed it, but three and one. Well, similar offering there from Brianna Lopez, and this time the patience of Davis, she doesn't bite on it, brings the count 3-1. Bases are loaded for Georgia and nobody out. 
And the RBI machine, Sarah Mosley, comes up. Well, you know, we talk at the opening of this inning how well that Brianna Lopez has been doing with the, the strikeouts and only one walk. And here, now she, in this inning alone, she has two walks. Her last at bat off of Brianna Lopez. We'll see if she makes the adjustment. Sends it to right, gets down for a base hit. Davila comes home. Georgia's on top two to one. Mosley doing what Mosley does best, bring in runs for Georgia. Yeah, and it's not a, you know, hard hit ball, but it's enough on the end of the bat to go over second baseman De Leon out to right field to score a run and put Georgia up. Good night at third, Castori at second, and Jada Kearney comes up. The SEC's home runs leader now at the plate, getting a chat from Tony Baldwin down the third base line. Until this inning, she was the lone walk given up by Brianna Lopez, her last at bat. I'm sure head coach Tony Baldwin is stressing, be patient and try and find a pitch that you can drive. Bases loaded and nobody out still for Georgia. Check swing, rolls it to short. Armistead flips to first base in time, but a run comes home. Good night slides across safely. Two in this inning for Georgia. Yep, really the only play that Ryan Starr had. That ball was just the check swing slow roller out to the shortstop. And good night with the speed and the good jump at third base, able to score. Castori at third, Mosley at second base. Just one out this inning for Ole Miss and Kuma at the dish. She shows bunt down the first baseline. Feel that it, feel that she's tagged out, but Castori scores from third. Kuma does her job. Georgia has opened this open with a three run lead now in the top of the seventh. Yeah, just a great squeeze bunt here and able to get Paige Smith, able to get Kuma heading down the line, but just not enough time to be able to get Castori at the plate. Now batting the left fielder, number two, Jaden Goodwin. Jaden Goodwin steps up with Mosley at third base. We saw yesterday Georgia try and squeeze home, and, and it was a botch squeeze play. Today they're able to be successful to score a run. Goodwin flies this out to right center, and it's Lassiter who makes the catch. And Ole Miss down to their last. No, it, it, you have to take advantage of opportunities. You have to put the ball in play. And it hasn't been a lack for trying. So we've seen some solid hits, and they're just right at people, which has pretty much been the story for Ole Miss all weekend. Annie Orman at the plate. Pinch hitter for Ole Miss. Doubled in game two yesterday against Georgia. And that's a foul ball. So Orman down on the count. Should say the count's even one and one. Now she's down on the count. And with that pretty pitch from Bacchus, she's down one and two. is using that rise ball there to change the eye level of the hitter, Annie Orman. We'll see if she comes back with that change up in this pitch. Orman scorches this foul. Orman hits 294 coming into the sit bat. 
10 hits, a career high for her. Mainly a pinch hitter this year. Started in eight of 22 games now. Of her 10 hits, five of them are doubles. Pretty much her entire career at Ole Miss has been pitch hitting roles. She does such a great job coming off the bench. Unfortunately there, she strikes out swinging. Backus gets her first strikeout this afternoon. And that brings up the top of the order for Ole Miss. Their most dangerous part of the lineup too, and Jayla Lassiter. Three runs for Georgia back in the top half of the seventh off two hits and an Ole Miss error. Single today for Lassiter. A pop out, a walk and a run scored. Off the in inner part of the bat, and a basket catch made by Digby. Ole Miss down to their last out. Come on, JP. Get a couple base runners here. Get a couple base runners. Come on, JP. Give me one. That's a great job by Digby to track that ball. Those are tough. Those are tough outs right there. Bacchus is in line for another win this weekend. She's already 11-1 in decisions this season with four saves. Bouncer right back to her. Flip to first. Ball game. Georgia sweeps Ole Miss in Oxford. And they